Hey everybody, Andrew here with 745 Fishing out of cold Kansas City. It's December 30th and it's around 30 degrees outside. It's sunny, but it's a lot warmer in here and I'm always looking for something to do in the garage. Um, so I thought I would take you for a tour around my boat. I just recently added LifeScope and I added another 93 SV Plus to the bow. Um, and so now I've got two 93 SVs up at the bow. Um, I've got the LifeScope up there and then I've got a 93 UHD here at the console. But I thought it would be fun to take you guys around and uh, probably be educational to tell you how I wired up everything um, using how I ran the transducers, how I um, powered everything, where I put the black box, all that stuff. Every boat is different, but I want to show you guys what I did um, and hopefully this will help. Um, when I was younger, high school, and in my college days, I actually um, bought and installed car audio. Um, and so I learned a lot about 12 volts and how to install all that stuff. So I've always done all of my own installations on my boats, but I thought it would be nice to take you guys through on how I did it and how particular I am with running stuff and doing that. So hope you guys enjoy it and I hope it helps. So just to take you on a quick tour of the boat, I've got the 93 SB UHD here at the console and then moving to the bow of the boat, I've got the two uh, 93 SB pluses up here. Uh, the top one I usually use just for live scope and then the bottom one obviously you can do clear view, side view or whatever else. I do have the uh, CV52 transducer hooked up to that. I also have everything networked and so I use the uh, Garmin GMS10 to network everything. So I can pull up any transducer, live scope, whatever I want to on any of the screens on this boat. So this is where I ended up mounting the black box for the life scope. This is on the starboard side of the boat um, in the rod locker. And this is an area that I found that could work. I had to get rid of the longer pedestal, uh, but I moved that to the other side, but I thought this was a good location. I don't store any rods in this one. I just store um, extra life jackets and all that type of stuff. So it's got plenty of space and I thought that it would be a a nice um, out of the way place to mount the black box. So here's just another view of the black box from the other side towards the bow of the boat. I've got all of the cables routed up towards the bow of the boat and then around, uh, but it's really out of the way and uh, nothing really comes in contact with this. Uh, the only uh, downside of me mounting it this way is that Garmin recommended that you mount it where you can see the status light and the status light on this faces towards the bow of the boat, so it's hard for me to see it, but I know if the black box is on and if something ever happens, I'll just get a mirror or something where I can look at the status light. So now I've taken you on a brief tour of the three graphs that I have and where I mounted the black box. The next thing that I wanna do is how I powered the live scope, and I wanna talk about how I networked all three graphs and the live scope together using the Garmin GMS-10 port expander. And I also wanna talk about the NEMA 2000 stuff that I used. So I'm here in the center storage area of my boat and I have a sea light adapter. It's a battery adapter. This one is specifically for a DeWalt 20 volt battery. And I'm using this battery adapter and a DeWalt 20 volt battery to power the live scope. Um, the live scope black box is rated up to 36 volts. So you can power it even more than this, but I'm doing a 20 volt system. And I ran it um, according to what Garmin told me I could do. Um, I know that some other people have ran their units on this as well, and I believe that works, but I actually went to Garmin World Headquarters here in Olathe, which is about six miles from my house, uh, last week, and I talked to them before I did all this installation. And they told me that they would recommend that I only power um, the Garmin uh, LifeScope Black Box with the 20 volt, as the 93 SV units are only rated up to 18 volt. So um, that's what I did. I ran um, the other graphs um, off the cranking battery at the 12 volts. And uh, I've been out on the lake a couple times and uh, my battery is about two years old and I'm still getting between 12.4 and 12.8 volts pretty much all day. So I'm good with that. Uh, and uh, the black box, like I said, is running off of this battery adapter right here and it's running at 20 volts. So all you do is you just take your battery and, just, and you just click it in there and it's good to go. Now when I first installed this, I did not have a switch on it. Um, I did install a switch, when I'm, which I'm gonna show you. Um, but what I found is that I forgot a couple times to take off the battery, even after all the units were off. 
Um, I forgot to take the battery out of here to turn off the black box. And it does draw power off the battery even though nothing's on. So um, I ended up ordering a switch off of Amazon and I installed it at the console and I'm gonna show you that as well. So while we're in the center storage area of my boat, I thought I would show you where I mounted the GMS-10. So as you can see, there's five ports on the GMS-10. I'm only running three graphs and the life scope, so I only needed to use up four of the ports. So I needed three networking cables, which I already had one that went from the console to the bow before I added all this extra stuff. Um, and then I've got the networking cable that's coming from the black box of the life scope that plugs into it as well. So I've got three networking cables that are coming from each of the graphs, and then I've got the one from the black box of the life scope, and everything can be seen on any of the displays. So I know that a lot of people are starting to use this 20 volt battery adapter system, which I think is awesome. Um, I'm using it to only power my live scope. Like I said, I know some people are using this for their live scope and their graphs. Um, but I ended up um, installing a switch up here at the console because like I said, a couple times I came back and I forgot to take out the battery, even though the black box is supposed to power down when everything else is and the transducer is out of the water but I found that it drew the battery's power down to nothing. And so I just thought I would install a switch. So I went ahead and installed a switch. As you can see, I just turned that on. It's a red LED, so it lets me know that it's on. And it takes, of course, a second for it to boot up, but now the pan optics will be on. Um, and then I can turn that off right there as well when I'm done. So I just showed you that I turned on the power um, to the black box on the live scope. And so now I can go up here to the, my top graph and there it is, the live scope is on. I can put this one on the traditional, let's say, and now I've got both graphs running. I am gonna show you what happens when I turn it off. So just as if you were to take out the battery from the adapter itself, if I just press this and I turn it off, you'll see that it says Panoptics Transducer is now disconnected because I have cut off all power to the black box. All right, so now I just wanna take you through some features of having everything networked um, together. You can do some pretty cool stuff. So I've got the live scope up on the top graph, as you can see. I've got the traditional 2D here on the bottom graph, but I can swap those uh, just because everything is networked and going through that GMS-10. I can go into here and I can go to home and I can pull up live scope here. And as you can see, I haven't even taken off the grid on this one yet. So I can put it on both. If I don't like the grid, if I do like the grid, I can have them on both. Um, something else that's really cool about having everything networked is that I can go into traditional. Right now, I'm using the CV52HW, which is the transducer that came with this unit originally. I've got that mounted on the trolling motor. Uh, but if I wanted to see what's going on in the back of the boat, if I'm driving through somewhere and um, the trolling motor is going back and forth and I'm not really getting a good picture on, let's say, side view or something, I can actually just go in here and use the sonar setup. I go to source and I do the console graph. I renamed all that so I know what's what. And then I go back here. And now I'm on the GT56 UHD. Of course, this unit up here is not UHD, um, but I can still use that transducer from the back of the boat and be able to see things here. So then, of course, I can go to here and I can do the 2D up here. So I'm using the 52 from the trolling motor here. I'm using the 56 from the back and everything is networked. I can also use the 52 at the console or the 56 obviously there too. And then I can see everything um, like I said, you can network to use your waypoints and network to just be able to see different transducers on different graphs when you want. So tucked underneath this front bow plate, I've got two things. I've got the Garmin Steadicast heading sensor and I've got a NEMA 2000 kit. Um, when I first bought this first 93 unit and was out fishing on a lake and I was on a waypointed spot, um, I noticed that my that the bow of my boat was not facing, at least it wasn't on the graph where I thought I was. And so I then realized that you had to have their steady cast heading sensor mount to always be pointed in the right direction on your map. With that, you also need a NEMA 2000 kit. So I originally bought the NEMA starter kit so I could hook up that. 
having to do a second graph up here, I wanted that heading sensor to be able to be on both graphs. So what I did was I ended up buying another um, T for the NEMA kit, and I ended up having to buy another NEMA cable, um, and then I hooked everything up. So now I've got the NEMA 2000 kit and the heading sensor on both of the front graphs. I do wanna quickly talk about this mount that I found on the internet. Um, like I said before in my intro, I'm very particular about things. I'm particular about wiring. Um, and I'm particular about how things look. And if I could draw up a perfect mount, this would be it. But it took me a long time to find. I finally found it um, at an online store, and I know he's got a store there in Dayton, Tennessee. Um, it's called Hennessy Outdoor Electronics. But uh, Brig down there helped me out. He took measurements for me and made sure that this was going to work out great, and it did. It worked out perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. Even even has a little area for the wires to go down inside the hole that I already had there and it looks really nice. So after watching a couple videos myself on where people have mounted and how they've mounted the uh, LiveScope transducer, I took a stab at it and I ended up mounting it. It has to be offset a little bit on the uh, Minn Kota Ultrex shaft. Um, it's not that hard to do. Um, if you've got the Garmin force trolling motor, um, it already has a little ridge on the shaft itself to where this thing just snaps into and you know exactly where it goes. So it's a little bit more challenging on this one just because it doesn't have that, but it's not that hard. But I at least wanted to show you, I did use uh, the perspective mount. I did uh, ended up buying that. It's pretty cool when you're out on the lake to see that in perspective mode. So just to show you how I ran the cable um, on my Minn Kota Ultrex, um, I did it. First of all, you, of course, you have to have some kind of loop here, especially if you have a perspective mount. Um, you need to be able to move this thing and have enough wire to where it doesn't pinch or pull. Um, I did use these cable protectors. I actually had these on a motor guide tour trolling motor that I had on a previous boat years ago, and I've always kept these. And these things are awesome. Um, I believe you can still get them at Bass Pro Shop um, in the tracker parts, but I ended up putting all wires inside of there and it runs up the shaft. I did put a zip tie on each one of these just so, um, just, just in case it snapped off, but I don't think it's going to. Um, and then I ran it up here. And then as you can see, um, I used the, the bolt holes that are already in the Ultrex and I went and bought some bolts and this clip and I ran the original 52 transducer wire. This was like this before I got the live scope. Uh, but I ran the live scope around here. And I know that um, they say, you know, don't use zip ties on the transducer cable from the live scope. But they said, if you do, just don't tighten them very tight. So these are as tight as they need to be without moving, if that makes sense. And I just ran this all around. And I did a unique thing. I'm going to take you over here and show you what I did. Um, I actually drilled a couple little holes and ran the wire down the mount of the Ultrex. And then on my boat, there's a little area right there on the front plate that allows cables to go down underneath that front plate. And that's how I ran it. This is, of course, an alternative route uh, without going down the cable shaft of the trolling motor. So just a couple miscellaneous items um, and some things that I did once I added that extra graph up at the front is I did run 10 gauge wiring to the front from the cranking battery. I put an inline fuse, of course. Each of the units also have their own inline fuse up there as well, but I did put one back here. So I've got 10 gauge um, hooked up. I ran it all the way up front and I'm running three things off that. I'm running the two bow graphs and I'm running the Garmin GMS-10, that is the network expander. Here's just a little tip. Um, if you're running any wire from the cranking battery up to the bow, or you're running it to the console, um, you know, running two wires side by side is sometimes hard. So something that I learned um, while installing 12 volt car audio um, back in the day was that anytime that we were running wire, um, we would put, the two wires or however many wires we were running together 
Um, and we would either have somebody hold one end or we would put it in like a vice grip or something. And then we would put the other end in a drill and just turn it on. And what it does is it twists all the wires together and they don't come apart. Um, and it makes it very easy to run these wires. Well, that about wraps it up. I hope that this helped. I'm not a professional installer. I just like to do my own installs on my boats. And uh, this one turned out nice and I thought that I would share how you network and how you can use that stuff. Um, if there's anything else that you have a question of, drop me a comment. If you wanna see something else that I didn't explain or you wanna see how I did something specific, let me know and I will make a video for it. Um, I hope everyone has a happy new year and good luck fishing.